anak, bakit ka umiiyak? Anong mali? Gusto mo isang ng therapist? Walang hiya ka? Hindi mo na kailangan isang ng therapist. Ako ng magiging therapist mo. Bakit ayaw mo akong kausapin? Dasal ka na lang. Just pray. Prayer and Vicks Vaporub are the solutions to all your problems in a Filipino household. <laughs> oh, for those of you who don't know, Vicks Vaporub, you know, is this ointment that Filipino parents and grandparents love to just smother and drown their kids in because it can heal just about anything. But what happens when the Vicks Vaporub isn't strong enough to ease your stress and your anxiety? When the prayers you send feel unanswered and you kind of just sit there empty, alone. But it's okay. Don't worry. You're fine. You don't need to cry about your problems and you don't need a fancy therapist. Instead, just pray even harder and then and then put the Vicks at the bottom of your feet and put socks over it. And every time you walk around your house, it's like the stress from, you know, your head just goes to your body and you're stomping out the stress. So you have no more stress and everything is solved because God bless Vicks Vaporub. I know I'm using examples from my own culture, but mental health is seen as taboo in many other cultures and immigrant families. It's identified as something only Americans have to deal with, and immigrant parents may use it to label their child as spoiled, lazy, or ungrateful. But it's not. It's a result of the pressures from trying to achieve. The pressure of maintaining those high grades that you've worked so hard for. The pressure of keeping up with the clubs and extracurriculars that you've carried on your shoulders so that your parents see you as a success. That they didn't leave their country behind just to see you as a failure. And when those sleepless nights finally catch up to you and you just want to break down from all the stress, you're still considered ungrateful ungrateful that you're complaining about the opportunities that you're given. And when you ask your parents to maybe see a therapist to help ease off the stress just a little bit, shameless. Now, I talk about the mental health of the immigrant children, but something that contributes to that would be the mental health of their own parents. Studies show that Studies show that if the parents of the immigrant children struggle with depression or other common mental disorders, that it ultimately affects the child as they're the ones who have to adjust and adapt. Not to mention, if the parents have undiagnosed mental disorders, that they don't have the resources to combat it. These common mental disorders are also the cause of the downward social mobility that some of these immigrant families may face, resulting in them relying on their child for aid. This forces the child to grow up faster. Now, let's say you're the 10-year-old child of immigrant parents, oh, whose first language is in English. Since they, have the, since they have trouble communicating because of the language barrier, they rely on you to translate phone calls, messages, emails, etc. Now let's say your parents, you know, your mom or your dad, they come up to you and they ask you to translate a phone call about their taxes. I don't know about you, but if my parents were to give me a phone call about their taxes, I'd look at them like they're crazy. I don't know nothing about taxes. What are you talking about? I don't do that. (laughs) Okay, but see, that's the thing. If me, a high school senior who doesn't know anything about taxes which is kind of bad, but who doesn't know anything about taxes, what makes you think a 10-year-old child who has to translate to their parents about their taxes knows anything about taxes? 
Not to mention, you have siblings to take care of because your parents are working late nights to help support your family. Oh, and you have school the next day, and you have to have all your work done. At 10 years old, you're a student, a translator, and a caretaker. That's a lot to ask out of a 10-year-old. Since the child is forced to grow up faster, they end up taking the role as the caretaker among their friends, which they take on the problems of their friends because they feel like it's their responsibility. This causes relationship problems among children their age since they don't know how to relate to them at all. Something to consider as well that contributes to the mental health of immigrant children would be that of the cultural norms and superstitions of their own culture. You see, immigrant children have to balance out two different cultures, that of their own ethnicity and that of the American culture. Jonathan Borges, a Nicaraguan American journalist, spoke about his experience and said, facilitating between two different, entirely different cultures came along with its own set of mental health challenges. This creates something called the immigrant paradox in which the Society of Research and Child Development defines it as a phenomenon where U.S.-born youth are more likely to experience higher rates of mental health problems than youth who, who immigrated from a foreign country. Borges mentions that these immigrant groups don't seek mental help since their culture already relies on other forms of coping mechanisms for resilience, such as prayer and having a tight-knit family community ways in which the problem is kept within. U.S.-born youth are exposed to more open and expressive ways of coping, such as seeking a counselor, a therapist, or even turning to their friends for help. However, it's also the American hustle and grind culture which can be seen as detrimental to one's health, as it encourages the negligence of mental health because... Well, simply, grind don't stop. <laughs> grind don't stop. It's seen here in which the two cultures clash because one side is telling you, you don't need to seek the help from others. On the flip side, you're encouraged to seek help from others, but you should probably just distract yourself with more work and deal with it yourself. So what do you do? Belang hiya. Shameless. You want to show your parents that you're not sensitive or lazy, and that through the power of God, Vicks vapor rub, and working even harder than before, everything will be all right. But you still feel the pressures of the world just collapsing on your shoulders and you're still too scared or timid to do anything about it because you don't want to bring shame to your family's name. Balang kahihiyan. Have no shame. Have no shame in seeking help for your mental health. Have that talk with your parents about what you're going through and how they can help you get through it. Educate those around you on how we can promote accessible, respectful, and comprehensive ways in seeking mental help. Have no shame in ending the generational trauma that has plagued your family. Have no shame in taking the courage to act. Maraming salamat. Thank you.